Oi. <laughs> I don't like it. In this video, I'm at the National Motor Museum of Turin, which is a slightly odd thing, but uh, we're gonna have a mooch around. There's an awful lot to see. Uh, no cars in this bit. So we'll go and find where are the cars. Up that escalator, I think. So we're gonna start with not a car. This is a replica of um, Kugno's steam wagon. Apparently it's about a one-tenth scale, so it must have been absolutely enormous. So it's steam powered with a uh, front wheel drive. So effectively, this is the Bond mini car, but way, way ahead. This dates from, um, uh, I think the uh, late 1700s, yes, yeah, 1769. So it just shows that the idea of using mechanical power to move a vehicle came a long time before Benz and Daimler were doing their thing in Germany. Oh, this one's fun. This is a recreation of uh, Da Vinci's spring-powered car from 1478. Uh, I've no idea how it works, but uh, you store the potential energy somewhere and it'll take you down the road, allegedly. Over here, we've got a De Dion Bouton uh, tricycle. Uh, De Dion, later known for their rear suspension, their independent drive, but I think this just has the one um, shaft going to both wheels, probably no differential or a very slight differential. So that's quite interesting. All right, here we go. The Museo Nazionale dell'Automobile di Torino. Uh, the National Motor Museum of Turin. A bit weird. This is a little video that plays showing the founder of the museum. And uh, perhaps this was his desk. Do not touch me, please. Oh, there's a, there's a phrase many of us need. Non toccami, per favore. So this doesn't need horses. This is a converted carriage from 1854. Carossa de Bibodini. So it's got a steam engine at the back and it could apparently do eight kilometers an hour and frequently did through the streets of Turin. That dates from 1854. So now we're at the dawn of the motor car. This is an 1896. Bernardi, uh, actually a motor car manufacturer. Uh, it's got a 624cc engine and can do 35, maybe 40 kilometers an hour. I can't help thinking the hood is not an aerodynamic friend. And then we've got a really early Peugeot from 1892. And next to that, Panada Elevasa, a Tipo A uh, from 1894. A Pecori, wow. Steam batteries or petrol before the car's destiny had been written. Intriguing. I think if you pro try and click that for your code, you, you can probably find out more. Um, this is the uh, Jamais Canton. Uh, it did 100 kilometers an hour in this electric, um, very streamlined vehicle. I don't know if that's the original or not. It all looks brand new to me. Oh, we just stepped through into this rather lovely area where we find yet more early cars. A Prinetti Astucci. Short-lived brand. Um, there were so many. Orient Express Duchess. And another 1899 Fiat. So it's the second one uh, of this trip alone. Well, only four have survived and uh, I've now seen three of them in my life. Serrano. Look at the um, old radiators. Another Didon Bouton. Oldsmobile curved dash runabout. These were um, quite popular things. And a Florentia. And another Fiat. This is from 1903. Starting to look more like an actual car. Here's a fun one, a 1907 Pope Waverley electric runabout. This could have been the future. And uh, in some ways electric is the future, but not for a very, very long time. You see the uh, big motor there underneath. 
Yeah, some amazing old cars here. And chandeliers. Well, there's rather too many old cars to look at in these um, pre-war period, but uh, this 1929 Isotta Freshini is um, an absolute beauty of a vehicle. We can go and have a nose inside. Look at how we've got occasional seats. Very, very um, opulent in there. Have a peek at the driving controls too. On the right, of course, uh, as I explained in another video, the Italians thought that right-hand drive was the, the way to go, even though they drove on the same side of the road as the French. So there we go, Isotta Frascini Milano. Uh, very much the uh, Italian Rolls-Royce. There is a Rolls-Royce, surrounded by people. We've got some musicians playing in the background. We've got a Cord L29. Now these were front-wheel drive, as I remember. Yeah, so the gearbox here up at the front. Cord, Erat Lobard Cord, was it? Um, definitely went his own way with engineering. A front wheel drive was very much his thing. Which allowed the cars to sit a bit lower because you hadn't got the drive line underneath. So, uh, in some ways, the American Citroen. Beautiful, ornate door handles. And again, I can probably just sneak you up to the window. But look inside, it is very dark in there, I'm afraid. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, Lancia Lambda. See, this is the first car that had no chassis. It is actually unitary construction on a convertible, no less. A very, very long convertible. A convertible that could have um, three rows of seats. Look at the door pocket. Lovely. So I remind of a, you know, Lancia was at one point leading the world in terms of technology. I see another Lancia just behind. So the Lancia Aprilia here, a fascinating car, narrow angle V4 engine, and uh, this monocoque construction with pillarless doors. There is no B post um, to them at all. They are lovely cars to drive. This one unusual in being um, left-hand drive. Uh, Mercedes-Benz 540K, that's quite the car, a Buick special, and a little bit of Longbridge has made it to Turin, Austin 7. Ah, oh, here we go, the old Citroen Traction Avant, launched in 1934, this is a pre-war one, I believe. Let's zoom out, there we go. But again, monocoque construction, front-wheel drive, and uh, a body production system, um, copied from Bud in America, or actually licensed from Bud in America to produce these super strong monocoques. A little Fiat 508 next to a Topolino little mouse. Oh, look at this. I apologize for the music. They like noise in this museum. A Fiat Turbina. So gas turbine powered Fiat. I didn't know they'd experimented with those. There's the power plant up in the back. Uh, the Citroen DS. <laughs> We've got one floating up here. And a Cicitalia, which was a car that set the scene for 1950s bodywork. Very unusual for the time. Launched in 1948, but it's got the wings as sort of part of the body rather than something separate. So uh, these are something very special indeed. Yeah, this is what happens if you pull the suspension height lever too far. Uh, it actually takes off. Uh, oh, look at this. It's the wooden buck for the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint, one of which is right next to it. Wow, we've got a Fiat 600 multiple. What is going on here? That's a rear wiper off a Renault Clio or something. What's that about? That is very, very weird. We'll try and get away from the music before we get copyright blocked. Uh, BMW Setter here. And uh, some front ends of some American cars. Weird. A uh, big Cadillac 62. I think I fil filmed a test on something similar while I was in New Zealand. Quite big, I'm going to say. And a Packard Super 8. 
That is um, a mighty lump of motor car. Look at the ornate mascot. Absolutely beautiful. And the teardrop shape on the door handles, the interior, Packards, kind of the Rolls Royce of America. This one's got the handy extra trunk capacity there. Looks like it's from Wyoming. It's a wall of mostly micro cars. Little Gogomobile there, the Bond Mini car, the Mini Morris Mini Minor, the Myco 500. I don't think I know an awful lot about that. I suspect Borgward involved by looking at it. The little Vespa, uh, the Scooter car. The Reliant Regal, they've got the Gogomobile Coupe down here, very, very pretty. And uh, the AC Petite up there, AC obviously building some Invercars as well. And uh, it's a later Regal of the first generation. Uh, the Barclay, little Friskies, it's a fun little display. So yeah, this exhibition is uh, David Egolia, David and Goliath. So there's the Goliaths, and over here we've got uh, the Davids. This is one of those Vespers, um, actually built in France. A bit of a joint development, so Lam Lambretta, uh, Vespa power. Don't say Lambretta, good grief, I'll get shot. I've got Fiat 1900 Grand Luce. It's a very rare car, I'm not sure I've ever seen one of those in the metal before. And then we've got uh, an Italian spec Mini, it is actually built by Innocenti. There are subtle clues. We've got clear indicators down here and the obligatory side indicators that identify it as an Italian market car. The same with the auto, little Auto Bianchi Bianchina. We've driven a van version of one of those. And a Fiat 600. We've got an E-Type here getting all the attention in the world. It's a series one and a half. You can take it's a one and a half because the headlamps are not behind glass. So that's towards the end of um, series one production. Yeah, 1969. Uh, we've got a 2CV looking very artistic here. For some reason it's got the wiper arms of a much later one. Uh, this one is a 1958. There are not enough 2CVs painted like this anymore. And then there's a camper van that you can actually sit in apparently so I'm going to do just that oh, I can even get behind the wheel oh yeah here we go and it is actually half of one I'm sorry about the music there is a door just there marvellous Loving the album covers, by the way. There's some of them we can't show you because they fear nakedness. But uh, yeah, they've kind of given it this slight 3D effect. Now here's an interesting one. We've got a Ferrari 308, nothing too remarkable about that. Although the first of them were um, fiberglass, but this one's a 208 in gray, which has a two liter turbo engine because the Italian tax system at the time um, really punished you if the engine was over two litres. So they made a turbo for the home market. And over here we've got an Iso Lele. So the BMW Isetta was the first car produced by um, fridge magnate um, Iso. And uh, they uh, didn't really get on with it, so they sold the design to BMW and went into making ridiculous supercars instead which um, lasted for a certain amount of time before inevitably going bankrupt. That's all we want to come from the museum. Oh, look. We've got a Citroen SM in the garage. Italian spec, it's got the clear indicators and the tiny, tiny number plate. And this bloke's gonna show us how to do a service. Uh, sit down, make yourself comfortable and wait for seven hours while he does it. Uh, I'm just going to feature this car mostly so I can call it a Trabant because apparently I called it a Trabant last time uh, but that's purely because I've been watching Aging Wheels and he's in Missouri um, in, in uh, America and uh, that's what he says so I'm sorry it's Trabant Trabant look at that interior I bet Robert's very jealous of it the Cold War's going on which is why we've got spotlights all around 
uh, keeping an eye on us. And this um, Gaz Pobeda over there. Italian Motor Museum quite likes Ferrari alert. Uh, this is a 365 GT4 2.2, later became the 412. It was never the most popular model, but um, apparently has its fans. So I think this display is meant to be about how these are old dinosaur cars and uh, maybe we can do something better in the future. Uh, I remember seeing this in the papers, the Fiat Eco Basic from the year 2000, the aim to be able to travel 100 kilometers on three liters of fuel. Uh, Betty went towing drinks 14 liters per 100 kilometers. So what a weird little thing. Oh, I like this, the Fiat Downtown from 1993. Uh, so um, it's an electric coupe. It's got sliding doors um, on the side. Uh, a massive pantograph wiper that I'm liking to look up very much and a central driving position with two seats alongside. Fascinating. Right, we're going to speed things up a bit because there's an awful lot to see. Pagani, that looks like a concept car. Uh, this looks like a power plant, that famous four pipe exhaust. And uh, yeah, here is a Pagani Huriyui thing. However you say that. They are um, extraordinary cars. I must admit, I think the styling on them is utterly delicious. And the uh, big V12 engines. Here's the original Zonda. It always looked a bit weird and cab forward, but somehow works. Uh, it's so big, I have to, there we go. Now we can see more of it. The interior is um, very, very crafted, but uh, yeah, let's go see what else we can find in here. This place seems awfully big. So this is quite fun. You can literally walk over Turin and they've got lists of all the car companies that were here and are no longer here. So Itala there was a big one in the early days. Ozzy, uh, Frua did bodywork. Uh, Gear, of course, Standard. Bizarrely, but a lot of names have repeated. I've already seen a Prince elsewhere. Uh, here's Lingotto. So we're going back there this afternoon to do some more filming. Yeah, it's great. And there's the Fiat 500, which wasn't made at Lingotto. Apparently there is a car company called Tesco. Ah, the Idea Institute has a styling house for does an awful lot of stuff. So yeah, come and mooch around Turin. Oh, what is this? This is a FOD. Wow, an original alloy structure and advanced solutions. Uh, unique and without a future. Oh, that's a bit sad. So that's the um, FOD, an unfortunate name perhaps. And some old Fiats, a SCAT Serrano. That's also a little unfortunate in terms of name. A Storero and a Stai. So these are representing manufacturers who are long gone. Jim's Instagramming. We have a display of mechanical things. Engines variously uh, from various times in life. 1908 in the case of this Lancia and Co. Look at that. All the exposed valve gear. And uh, we've got various wheels turning around. The elastic wheel. Intriguing. Those motors are making some utterly horrible noises. Uh, so Fiat 1500, we saw one um, yesterday at the uh, Centro Storico Fiat. Does that sound Italian yet? Or does it just sound like an English person who hasn't got a clue? Oh, we've got more wheels. You're in the way with wheels, Jim. Wheel. wheel with Michelin carp lisse tire. Oh, what's interesting? It's got a little red hand bolster on it. Ah, it's a Rudge wheel, and they bought Boriani in the um, long time ago. Ah, there we go. I like these. Nice, just a plain steel wheel, just done right. 
and steel wheel with large ventilation windows. A bit like our Panda, I'm guessing, which then has alloy looking trims over the top. Uh, more magical engines, Alpha, V6, the 625 EV1, apparently. Uh, Lancia Lambda engine, Isotta Frascini. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Ford Model T, it looks like there's loads of them. It's all done with mirrors. Jim has told me this is the worst fairground ride ever. Jim, what are we on? The world's worst uh, fairground attraction. Yeah. Do we, are we looking at Fiat body shells, apparently? Yes, it's the production of a Fiat 500. Oh, okay. Um, from body shell, painting, yeah, yeah. assembly, to final product that rolls it off the production line uh, in Poland, which is okay. no, nowhere near Le Gato. No, no, nowhere at all. Oh, there we go. We've got the underframe there. It's interesting to see one in um, component form. And a finished one. And so ends the exciting ride, is that it? Oh, we get to see the other side of them. Oh, okay. Plus, a couple of crash tests. Oh, this is a Fiat 500 made of Fiat 500s. And that one's driven into a wall, best avoided. I mean, we could probably see them better if we were just walking, but still. Oh, is this where we get attacked by robots? Hopefully not. Okay. Yeah, this is um, a slightly pedestrian pace, but still, it's a cute day. Oh, is that an Auto Bianchi yes. Primula? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Go and look at the Primula when we eventually get back to the base station again. Look, if I do this, I can make it look like I've got some really, really um, amazing gimbal or something. So I can do tracking shots. Right, here are some cars I can get very excited about. 1952 Beetle, always nice to see one that hasn't been slammed, yo. Uh, the Lloyd Alexander, built by, um, uh, what's the name, Borgward. It's a small ec ec economy car, but actually a really nice one. I apologize for the flicker. The LEDs are apparently upsetting to my um, phone. The Auto Bianchi Bianchina, that one's a little coupe. Very pretty, based on the Fiat 500. But here we go, the Auto Bianchi Primula, which um, wasn't the first, but it probably was a pioneer in the world of transverse four cylinder engines with an end on gearbox. So uh, Auto Bianchi was um, chosen to kind of be the test for the uh, technology before it was applied to mainstream Fiat. So I'm squeezing in just because it's got these beautiful little uh, tail lights at the back. So this one not a hatchback, the early ones weren't, and then they introduced a full hatchback as well. So this really was, um, in some ways, the first super mini. And then we got the uh, Fiat 500, of course, and uh, it's great rival in small, cute terms. The mini is one, a quite late one. Uh, this is a Fiat 500 that has hit a leaf. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm so funny. The dummy does not look pleased with life. Please end me. And uh, this kind of looks like a concept car in a way it's all completely blacked out. But uh, nonetheless, it is apparently parked in a wall. Is there anything in there? We'll never know. And yes, here is the um, robot apparently attaching a model to the top of this Fiat 500 covered in Fiat 500s and then taking it off again. This poor thing. But I guess that's what robots do. They just repeat a movement over and over again. So maybe he's living his best life. Uh, we've got to the silly section. So we've got a Fiat Panda that uh, has been turned into a sardine can. We don't know why, we don't know why. And if we progress in here, we've got um, a squashed something. We can have dinner in our race seats and watch, watch strange things on the um, television. Uh, we've got the other end of the Fiat 500. I wonder if that's like a concept car and they just thought, let's do something different with it. Uh, fuel pump, uh, random boxes of things. Uh, we've got 
This made out of Renault 4, I think, Renault 4 doors. And uh, then we've got the uh, Fiat Panda cooker. We've got the Cinquecento dishwasher. Very rare limited edition, the Cinquecento dishwasher. And uh, the Fiat Doblo fridge. Um, complete with ice machine, it seems. So yeah, some, someone got very silly here. Oh, the lights. Look, it's like, save me. <laughs> too late, Panda, too late. Oh, watch out for the bed bugs. Are you okay there? Uh, yeah, Abat wardrobe. Uh, we've got a bath. A bath. It's just a bath on wheels. That's for the um, Italian version of. Um, oh, what's the program? Last of the summer wine. Uh, okay. A drivable carsy. I don't understand what's going on in here at all. I have absolutely no idea. Um, a stove made out of another Cinquecento. A uh, door. Presumably just so you can open the window if it gets too cold. Oh. Sit and watch telly and go for a drive. Well, that was weird. And then we have more old cars and a bush. Uh, Fiat 500 green motoring. Through the power of magic, you can believe these cars are racing once more. Maybe. I uh, don't think I have much information about what they actually are. Uh, that looks out for a may wish to me. And that's why it's a Maserati. See? I don't know anything about these things. Oh, we've got a W196 Mercedes over here. A very iconic with kind of a this big scoop on the front. Yeah. A trippy section for sure. So this is the uh, Ferrari 312 T5 of Gilles Villeneuve. Who's there on the um, right, I think. Look at the size of those tires, enormous. A more recent Formula One car, 2005. Uh, Ferrari F2005 of uh, Michael Schumacher. And there's, oh look, they've got the uh, latest uh, Ferrari driver right there, Lewis Hamilton. So this 130 horsepower Fiat has a 16 litre four cylinder engine. That's pretty astonishing. And was a race winner, I believe in 1907. Chain drives, got wooden wheels still. That's uh, crazy. By block, so two, lots of two cylinders effectively. Overhead valves, that's quite Im impressive. Well, so the second car, F2. Oh, that's this one did win uh, the Automobile Club de France Grand Prix. Gosh. Larini's uh, Alfa Romeo 155. Not really an Alfa Romeo, is it? It's just body paddles clad round a, a space frame, but uh, a very extraordinary looking thing. Well, we're on the final floor, folks. We've got a Fiat 850 saloon. I'll come out a bit wider. There you go. Lovely little cars. Four cylinder engine at the back, the 128. Front wheel drive. So that's what picked up the running gear of the Primula. Uh, Alfa Romeo, I can never remember what these are. Julia's 1750s, I think they had various names. Um, a GP thing. I wonder who made that. Vab. Apparently. Oh, one, two, six. And even when you park them inside, 
they still rust. It's almost magic. But I love the condition of that. That looks amazing, the paint. Oh no, when your petrol's running out, what you need is a little car. But look how many of them were tiny little Fiat 500s back in the day. Uh, and a 600 there, lording it over the smaller 500 behind. Nice. And this is the unfortunate adventures of the Vankel engine in the NSU R080. I've got a test of one of these on my channel. Uh, I'll just try and find the right angle. NSU twin rotor, about a litre nominal capacity and uh, semi-automatic, very advanced cars. And there's a bus here, you can go in and watch telly. It's not a bus at all, it's a water pump and a wall. Okay, this, this has gone strange again, folks. Uh, so here we have a uh, Lancia Delta HF Integrale uh, in component form. This is quite interesting, so you can see how the gearbox works. Taking drive at 90 degrees to power the rear wheels as well as the front. Uh, there's like a sort of limited slip diff arrangement down there. Interesting. And this is one of Stellantis's EV platforms, which is the future, apart from the fact it probably isn't. This one apparently off a DS. And a rear motor as well as a front motor by the look of it. Hmm. And here is our third Fiat Topolino of the uh, trip so far. We found two at Lingotto. So this is the Citroen Ami reinvented somewhat. Uh, with uh, different panels front and rear. A very pretty little thing, but still pretty hopeless as a form of transport. Why can't they make one that does 50 miles an hour? You'd probably kill yourself in it, that might be why. Ah, here's an interesting car. Uh, I think it's just a cheap Chinese um, uh, electric car as a base. I think we've even seen a few of these driving around, but uh, I think this is a hydrogen car. Yeah, the XVM, or XAM, sorry. Uh, registered and roadworthy quadricycle. Two seats. Oh, it's fully electric, this one. And it's um, been to Brighton at some point. Then Brighton to London. An EV challenge. Wow, back in 2012. Far older than it looks. Nice pantograph wiper. Uh, that's a bit more extreme. And this is the future, folks. We are going to be cycling around in things like this. And uh, no more cars maybe. And uh, Lancia, represented here by the um, Beta, or Lancia, I should say. We are in Italy after all. And this is the Pura HP concept, I think. A rather fascinating concept car. Some Stratos hints there at the back. Look at the uh, Lancia name. Sorry, Lancia. And we can even see inside it just about. Nice. So I was trying to set the scene for current Lancia or Lancia um, styling because you know the brand does still exist. It just doesn't exist in the UK anymore and hasn't for quite a long time. Oh look at this Lancia Flaminia Quirinale, built for the Queen uh, on one of her state visits. Hence the um, full convertible roof. That is um, a good old size. Nice. Uh, that's a fire extinguisher. Uh, these are some more um, race orientated cars. The uh, Chis Italia. Again, the amazingly named Alfa Romeo Disco Volante. How's that for a name? Uh, Lancia Appia Zagato. That's quite cute. Uh, Alfa Romeo 2600. I love the way the indicators look. We haven't fitted indicators, so just put them on front, top of the bumper, it'll be fine. Uh, the 1600 Spider. Um, Duetto was the name of the earliest versions of these, but it seems Italian to apply it to all of them. Uh, the Ferrari Testarossa. This is a Monodado, apparently. Whatever one of them is, it's quite a late one, but not too late. Uh, it's still got the single nut on the uh, wheel to remove them there. 
um, rather than the five studs of the very last ones, but it has got the lowered door mirrors. And then we've got the uh, Lamborghini Diablo with a fascinating two arm, two blade wiper setup and quite a few spoilers going on as well. It is a, an extraordinary car. I genuinely don't think Lamborghinis of the current era really match the sheer drama of these earlier ones. And there we go, we have reached the very end. We've seen all there is to see. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, don't forget you can head to the Thumbnail Store if you'd like to buy lovely merchandise. But otherwise, I shall see you in a future video. Probably not in Turin, but I can't promise it. Farewell. <laughs>